chillin', 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 chillin' with that season one intro right there, people. Lo fi poly style. Michael Pickering here talking our famous question What's going on in the world today? And it is, in fact, the last week of season five. Seven months, 96 episodes. Friday will make 100 episodes for season five. So this week, we're closing it out in style. We'll intro in with the music from all of the five different seasons on every single day, ending with Season five's intro on Friday. But next week, we are taking the week off, doing our final preps for Season 6. And then Monday, August 15th, we're rolling out. S6, EP number one. But first... The news, fresh off that press, let's turn our attention to Iraq, people. Lots going down in Iraq, my friends. Last week, twice, protesters took over the parliament building. Like the official government parliament building. After the first time, they were dispersed or they left, you know, depending on who you ask. But this second time, on Saturday, well, they haven't left yet. And they aren't planning to leave. At first, it was reported that police and protesters were going at it. But then the police said, Okay, take it. It's yours. We're done with this. And now, going on the second day, the people of Iraq, well, they're making some noise. And and does does all this kind of sound a little familiar? You know, maybe maybe a little bit perhaps like Sri Lanka? Question mark? Well, I'll tell you one big difference. Iraq doesn't currently have a government to take down like the protesters did in Sri Lanka. Iraq's largest party was trying to put together a coalition of ruling parties. And these protesters are trying to keep that from happening. And the reason? The protesters and their leaders claim that those who are trying to take control of Iraqi politics are controlled by Iran. And that, these Iraqi protesters here, are not happy about. We'll keep you updated as we find out more for sure, people. Now to updates in Lebanon, where previously we talked about, you know, recent past elections taking place, and now that new parliament is wanting to know who's the next president. Because the current one, their term ends in just a few months, on October 31. That's not far away at all. So they want to get on this, so... Political gridlock doesn't take place. And the Speaker of Parliament says, Oh, I think not. You see, Lebanon has been trying to get some aid from the IMF. That's the International Monetary Fund, which is an international organization that lends monies to countries in economic crisis. These are short-term, short-notice emergency loans, okay? But the IMF has conditions that the Speaker says they need to address and pass some laws so that they can get the aid. So, the government of Lebanon is in bad need of financial support. The IMF is willing to supply that support if the Lebanon government passes some new laws. And the government has not yet passed those laws. And their president's term ends soon. And the speaker won't consider calling on a vote for a new one until the laws of the IMF are passed. You get all that? People, this is politics. A conversation about who gets what, when, and how. We'll keep a close eye on this one, my friends. Because political instability? Well, the people don't like ineffective governments. Just ask the people of Sri Lanka. Ask the people of Iraq. And government officials in Lebanon? You know your people are watching events in those countries, too. Eyes open, lo-fi listeners. Now let's head on over to Tunisia, the birthplace of the Arab Spring and the People's Power Movement toppling governments back in 2011, and the last democratic transitional country of the Arab Spring, whose president last year took over the country and resigned from Tunisia having that previously stated title. The Arab Spring? Well, we'll get to that. Well, last week we talked about how they were voting on that new constitution proposed by the president. And the vote count's done. And with 95% of voters voting yes to embrace the new constitution. Lo-fi listeners, come close. Come real close. 
No free and fair election in the world wins by 95%. What the fuck? This is so, so bullshit. 95%, my ass. There was only 30.5% turnout for the referendum. That means almost 70% of Tunisia's electorate did not vote for this constitution. Because they were boycotting the vote. Because the constitution is nothing more than a paragraph by the president to give himself more power and make it look legitimate. And people, that's it. Done is done. Goodbye, Arab Spring. Goodbye, democracy in Tunisia. It's over. Or is it? What do you think the people of Sri Lanka would say? What do you think the people of Iraq would say? What do you think the people of Tunisia, the birthplace of the Arab Spring, what do you think they're thinking right now? Eyes open, ears to the ground. This is far from over, people. Now let's swing right on over to Algeria, right next door to Tunisia, to the west. So Algeria, a North African country, a former colony of France, and as many former colonies of France in Africa, lots of their schools and government dealings are in French. A lingering legacy of colonization. The president of Algeria is changing that, though. And now, instead of French being taught to school children when they are young, they'll learn English. And the reason? Simple. French is the language of their colonial oppressors, and English is an international language of business. That's the president's justification. And look, I don't really have an opinion on this one here. There's pros and cons of choosing either or. And what about education taking place in the native tongue of the people going to school? And look, I'm not a primary school teacher. I don't know anything about giving instruction in multiple languages to little kids. Not my area. I will say, Learning multiple languages is most certainly a good thing, and it gives us as human beings more opportunities, without a doubt. And I will say, hats off to making a move. And why may I be saying that? Just because a thing has always been a thing, that should not be a justification to keep that thing the way it is. We should always give ourselves room to grow, to learn, to evolve into better human beings. But what do you think out there, peeps? French, English, or the native tongue of the students? Right in. I'm curious what you got thinking going on right now. What you got thinking going on. My English. You could tell it's summertime. I should edit this out. It's staying. Now, a last piece of news to send you on your way for the day. Russia is leaving the International Space Station. Yep. Though just not yet, but by 2024, they are planning to have their own space station, and they're going to play with their own toys up there by themselves without the West. Now, I'm sure some of you out there may be saying, well, so what? We have our own space station, and we're doing just fine. But what you have to realize, the International Space Station is old, and it's scheduled to be done and finished by 2030, just eight years away. So Russia pulling out to do their own thing before that? Well, plus China has been putting together their own space station too. It's already up there. They just keep adding more and more modules to it. And if you're still like, well, so what? Who cares? It's just space. My friends, most of the cool stuff we have that makes our lives so easy and nice and enjoyable, we have because of the space program. Because of all the technological advances and innovation that goes on while people are trying to figure out how to make space possible. And the more people that are working together, truly collaborating, the better the innovation, the better the tech. And it's already sad that China is doing their own thing. Because the U.S. and Europe, they won't allow them to own the space station. So, they built their own. And now Russia is going to do the same thing. This is just less and less scientific collaboration, which means less and less innovation and less money. People, the U.S. may have the largest economy as measured by GDP, and the European Union may have the second largest economy as measured by GDP. But China has the third largest economy, and Russia has the 11th largest economy. If these four groups could just work together for space innovation, 
Damn, people. We would have been to Mars ten years ago. Like, for real. But who knows what the future holds. Perhaps, just maybe, we'll all get along tomorrow. Because Tuesday is, in fact, a new day. And that's a brief snapshot of what's going on in the world today. Check out this month's issue of Letters of the Lo-Fi poli as well as Friday's blog post, both on lo fi And it's not a cliche or a catchphrase. It's a lifestyle. Always remember that Lo-Fi poli is more than just me. It's the we that we be. Talk to you tomorrow, Lo-Fi listeners. Pickering, signing off. <laughs>